Well, 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 Edison. I happened to be cruising by your place a few moments ago, and guess what? The lights weren't even on. Are you still slaving away at your work? Shouldn't you be back home, busy, getting dinner ready for my precious son? Or am I just expecting too much from you? Sorry about that, Violet. I got caught up in an important meeting today, and it ended up running a bit longer than I anticipated. But don't worry, I'll be heading home real soon. Oh, what a surprise! Another late meeting, huh? Is that your excuse every time? How convenient! It's not like you have any other responsibilities, right? Just keep on with your precious meetings while I wait here, twindling my thumbs. Don't bother rushing or anything. I'll just be here, waiting for you to grace me with your presence. I apologize, but it's beyond my control. With my current managerial position, I have a lot more responsibilities on my plate. It's just the nature of the job. Oh, look at this—a big shot who didn't even finish college. Trying to play pretend as a Korea woman, how cute! Who needs an education and qualifications when you could just make believe your way into a job, right? It's truly hilarious to see someone like you deluding themselves into thinking they're a professional. Keep up the charade, sweetheart. It's truly amusing to watch. No, that's not it at all. Oh please, a high school diploma is all you've got. And you think you can land some important job with that? How utterly delusional! Having such a menial qualification doesn't excuse you from being a complete failure as a wife and neglecting your duties, like making dinner for your poor husband. It's quite clear that you're incapable of handling any responsibilities, be it career or domestic. Pathetic, really. I actually prepared dinner for him before I left. And it's all ready and waiting for him in the fridge. Excuse me, it's in the fridge, you say? So you expect Philip to heat up his own dinner in the microwave? How considerate of you! I'm sure he's thrilled to come home after a long day and zap his own meal in a microwave like some sort of a bachelor. Why bother putting any effort into being a decent spouse when you can just shove the responsibility onto him, right? When both of us have to work late, like tonight, we have a system in place. We make dinner ahead of time and store it in the fridge. That way, neither of us has to worry about cooking when we come home exhausted. Plus, if Philip happens to be home earlier than me, he takes the initiative to prepare dinner for me. It's all about supporting each other and finding practical solutions. Edison, what did you just say? What? Did I say something strange? You're going to treat your husband like trash? I'm sorry. How am I treating him like trash? Oh, here we go again. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Just because you want to have some fancy job, doesn't mean you can shrink your responsibilities at home. Newsflash, honey. It's the wife's job to cook for her husband. That's how it's always been, because that's how it should be. But I guess you're too busy chasing your so-called career dreams. To understand the basic duties of a wife, keep neglecting your role and see how long your marriage lasts. Good luck with that. I do as much as I can around the house. If you're making my son cook his own meals, that means you're failing at being his wife. Um, I think there's a misunderstanding here. In our household, things don't quite work the way you described. We both have jobs and responsibilities. So it's not just one person's duty to handle all the housework. We believe in sharing the load and helping each other out as much as possible. Philip understands and supports this arrangement wholeheartedly. If there's ever something I can't find time to do, Philip willingly takes care of it for me. Plus, he genuinely enjoys cooking. Oh come on! Spare me the excuses. Back when he lived at home. He wouldn't even step foot in the kitchen unless there was something already made for him to gobble up. That's the truth, plain and simple. That may be so, but he told me when he started living on his own, he had to start making his own meals, and that's when he started to really enjoy it. I don't buy that for a second. He's just playing along, pretending to humor you so you don't feel bad about yourself. 
He's forced to make dinner for himself because you can't even manage that simple task. Just like he tolerates your pathetic charade of being a businesswoman. It's all just a facade and he's silently putting up with your nonsense. I really don't think that's what's going on. Oh, let me tell you something. You see, after I tied the knot, I continued working for a solid three years before Philip came into the picture. I was a force to be reckoned with. The best saleswoman there was. I put in the hours and gave it my all. But even with my demanding career, I never expected my husband to lift a finger when it came to household chores. Nope, not at all. I took it upon myself to handle every single task, effortlessly. I made sure dinner was on the table for my beloved husband every single night, and I even woke up early each morning to prepare his lunch. It was only when I made the conscious decision to dedicate myself to raising Philip that I bid farewell to my job. Let me tell you, my departure left my former company in shambles. They were devastated, absolutely devastated. They pleaded with me for years, begging me to return because they knew they lost their star performer. But my loyalty was unwavering. I was committed to my family through and through. Well, I think that's really great, Violet. Look, you can play make-believe as a career woman all day long but that doesn't give you a free pass to neglect your responsibilities at home. I'm not pretending to be anything I'm not. Well, it sure as hell looks like it. Anyway, your feeble attempts at being a career woman are nothing but laughable. But here's a little piece of advice. Why don't you try being more like me? Oh, that's right. You couldn't even fathom the level of dedication and hard work I put in. And if you can't live up to that standard, then I suggest you quit that pathetic excuse of a job you have. It's clear that you're just not cut out for it. Addison, I see you finally started listening to what I've been telling you this whole time. Oh, hi, Violet. I'm sorry. What are you referring to? You quit your job, didn't you? Huh? I knew it would be too challenging for someone with just a high school diploma to keep up the facade of being a businesswoman. It's not as easy as it looks, right? Um, I think there's some kind of misunderstanding here because I'm still working, apparently. Oh, really? Well, if that's the case, then why haven't I been spotting your car in the driveway when I drive by? It's been a reoccurring sight for over a month now. I was actually convinced that you had called it quits on your job. I'm working remotely now. So you're working remotely? So you're doing all your work from home, right? When did you start doing that? Yeah, about six months ago. They moved me out of the sales department and into a different department. The department I'm in now is actually one of the first in our company to start doing remote work. Oh, let me get this straight. You're implying that they've gathered all the impotent folks and dumped them into some new department to handle mindless, low-level tasks from home. Essentially, these are the tasks that the company needs to get done, but they don't want their employees to be caught dead doing them in the office, right? Pardon me? Well, isn't the sales department the most important department in the company? And they actually booted you out of there I mean, let's be real. Your performance reviews must have been a catastrophic train wreck. So they thought it would be best to stash you somewhere far away where you won't have the chance to embarrass the company anymore. Am I right? Um, no. That's not what happened at all. It goes to show that nobody's buying your act anymore. They saw straight through your little charade. Now that you've got all the time in the world at home, Make sure you prioritize scrubbing those floors and doing all the housework before you go gallivanting around, pretending to be a big shot businesswoman, all right? Um, wait, what? I think there's been a misunderstanding here. I'm not handling menial tasks. In fact, I'm the new executive assistant, working directly for the CEO. Huh? An executive assistant? In fact, when I was in sales, I was the head of the department. What? You were the head of the sales department? Absolutely. And you know what? I handled my responsibilities so well 
that the owner recognized my efforts and decided to promote me to the position of executive assistant. It's been quite an exciting journey. A promotion to executive assistant? Yes. Oh, give me a break. Are you seriously trying to pull off this joke? You don't even have a degree and you're in your early 30s. Let me break it down for you. To reach such a high position in a company, you need to have a fancy degree and decades of seniority under your belt. It's not some fairy tale where you magically climb the ladder without putting in time and effort. You're right that I didn't finish college. But after I started working, I've gotten a lot of certifications that make me more than qualified for my position. And I'm lucky to be with a company that recognizes my hard work and dedication. That's why I was able to get promoted to a position like this. Violet, were you just in my house? You went right into my home office, didn't you? What did you do to the laptop that was on my desk? Oh, are we panicking now or something? Of course I am. And how did you get into our house anyway? Me? You don't have any proof that it was me, haha. <laughs> I have a video conference running all day long. People from my office saw you walk into my home office. Huh? Video conference? The sound was turned off and the screen saver probably came on. So you likely didn't notice, but the desktop computer in the corner has the video running all day. That live feed is how they keep track of our working hours. I had to go pick up someone. That's why I wasn't home. But I wasn't home for more than 30 minutes. They saw you come into my home office and take the laptop right off my desk. Everyone saw it. What? Did you steal our spare key and make a copy for yourself or something? Whatever. I don't care about that right now. Just give me back that laptop. I don't know anything about this. I told you there were witnesses. So just give it back. You're getting that upset over this? It's just one little laptop. You carry around one laptop and you think you're some important businesswoman. You need to stop living in a fantasy world and get back to reality. I did this for your own good. It's because of your own stupidity that I confiscated your laptop. What are you talking about? Just give it back. Well, I can give it back. But I don't think you'll be able to use it anymore. What? Why not? Because I smashed the screen and the keyboard with a hammer. <laughs> you what? What the hell is wrong with you? I knew if the computer still worked when you got it back, you'd just continue this delusion of yours. That laptop is company property. Huh? You mean that laptop wasn't yours? That's what I'm saying. I can't believe you. You take company property home with you whenever you feel like it? I should report you. What? If you did that, I won't be held responsible for what happened. You took their property home and now it's damaged. You're going to have to tell them that you did it and pay them back for it. That laptop was given to me specifically to take home with me. Huh? Not only do I work from home, but I have to visit clients too. A lot of people in our company travel around and meet with clients and work on the road. All of them are assigned company laptops so they can get their work done. Especially the ones who do remote work. I didn't know. Violet, do you have any idea what you've done here? You have to understand that you don't know everything and you have to stop making assumptions. Luckily, I have all my data backed up, so this shouldn't set me back very far. But I'm sure they're going to make you pay for that computer. If I were you, I'd make sure you had at least $1,200 to $1,300 ready to pay them. W what? That much? You should never have taken something home from your office that costs that much. Hey, don't get mad at me for something you did. I was trying to teach my daughter-in-law to stop pretending to be someone important and to stop being more of a wife to my son. It looks like you're not going to listen to a word I say. Let me get someone else to talk to you. She just happens to be here with me right now. What? Who are you going to get to talk to me? Who do you mean? Hi, Violet. Uh, who are you? It's me, Alicia. What? Uh, Alicia? 
As in my mother-in-law. Did Addison tell you to message me? That's right. Are you in town? Yes. I came to town to see an old friend, and Addison and Philip were letting me spend the night in their place before I go home. Addison left to pick me up because I was having some trouble with my car. We just arrived back here and now Addison's laptop is missing. What's going on here? Well, um... Violet, let me tell you something. Things have changed a lot in the workplace over the years. And it wasn't that long ago that it became common for both the husband and wife to be out working. Things definitely aren't like they were when you or I were young. Society has changed and it seems some people haven't changed with it, huh? In case you haven't noticed, we're in the 2000s now. Can you not see the things have changed? Are you saying you understand all this? You're older than I am. Did you forget that I was working in a managerial position up until I retired? I saw how fast technology was changing even while I was still working. I know. I understand that too. I know all about technology and uh, remote conferences and video work and I'm chatting with you on my smartphone right now, aren't I? I don't think you understand the big picture here. All I was trying to do was to get Addison to be a responsible wife, take her real responsibilities seriously, to stop thinking she was a big important businesswoman. She never even finished college. So, you think she's not a businesswoman, huh? What would you know about that? Are you saying that when you were working, you were... That's right. Maybe you're not aware of it, but I was a saleswoman too. Oh, I see. A saleswoman who couldn't land any decent contracts. One that was banned. Banned from going to clients' offices because of too many embarrassing blunders. One that was forced to input data for the sales department. And then, when you couldn't even handle that, they made you secretary so you could make copies and take messages for the important staff members. Even then, when something was still too difficult for you to do, you would either wouldn't do it or you'd find someone else to do it for you. I heard all about you. You were quite the go-getter, huh? What a businesswoman you were. Wow. How... how did you know all of that? That's the type of worker you were. That's the whole reason you decided to stay home and raise your children, isn't it? And don't think for a second that my son never told me about your homemaking skills. I know your meals were all just frozen foods, microwaved and put on a plate. You weren't fooling anyone. All these years later, you still haven't learned to cook? What did you do all day at home? Because it wasn't anything productive. But I... why? Do you recall someone named Katrina? A person you used to work with in the office all those years ago? Katrina? Yeah? Well, she's friends with my daughter. What? I met her at my daughter's house about a year ago. I forget how we got on the subject, but... It came up that she worked for the same company you told me you worked for. When I told her my daughter-in-law was you, she instantly remembered you. She had a lot of stories to tell about you. She told me all about your incompetency and the mistakes you made and how she couldn't believe the company didn't fire you over them. <laughs> the day you quit your job was the happiest day for everyone at that company. You're lying. That's why you quit your job to stay home and raise your kids, isn't it? Because you knew it was only a matter of time before you would have been fired anyway. If only your incompetence ended in the office. Huh? My son and grandson have told me all about how you're the stay-at-home mom that can't cook and barely clean. My husband and my son said that? Did you think they wouldn't figure out you were heating up frozen foods every night? The only reason they didn't say anything was because they didn't want to hurt your feelings. But believe me, everyone knows. I can't believe this. And all this time you've been thinking Addison's lying just because you were. I think you're just jealous of her. 
If only you would have gotten better at your job or gained some qualifications, huh? This can't be. Maybe we shouldn't have all stayed quiet because it seems you actually started believing in your own lies. And now, you think you're the greatest stay-at-home wife and mother who ever lived. But know that your delusion has started causing trouble for my grandson's wife and family. We're not staying quiet about it anymore. Alicia, wait. I think I'm going to head over to your place right now while I'm in town. I feel I need to have a talk with you in person. These text messages aren't quite cutting it. You need to understand that you're the last person who should be giving advice in the office work or housework. Oh no, please. I beg you to listen to me. This whole situation is one huge misunderstanding. I'm pretty sure that Addison and I can resolve our issues if given the chance to talk it out. You know what? I'm willing to swallow my pride and apologize to her face to face. So, please don't come here. See you soon. Even though Violet's mother-in-law, Alicia, has been enjoying her retirement, she has managed to stay up to date with technology in the workplace. She's well versed in video conference calls and understands how some departments can implement remote work easily. Alicia is the kind of grandma who plays smartphone games and even upgrades her own PC. She's quite the opposite of my mother-in-law, Violet. It's surprising that Violet knows how to send text messages to be honest. She tends to have a more traditional mindset, believing a woman's role is strictly in the home. Not that she excels at the role either. <laughs> After Alicia had a conversation with Violet over the phone, she decided to drive over to Violet's house using my car. I'm not entirely sure what Alicia said to her. But ever since then, Sharon hasn't complained to me about anything. As for the company computer that Violet ruined, my company held her accountable for the damages. They actually went as far as threatening her with legal action and criminal charges if she didn't replace it. Since Violet relies on her social security income, and doesn't have much spare money, she had to take on a part-time job just to pay off the cost of the computer. Hopefully, through her new job, Violet will gain some exposure to modern technology and witness how it has evolved over the years. Although, I highly doubt that the restaurant dishwashing technology has changed much since her younger days. 